Let's talk about this trash. Well, fellas, it's your good old pal, Tom, the chosen one, and I hope you're all having a good old time because, well, today's video, fella, is not going to be a good time for me. It might be for you, but luckily for me, I got my bottle of Ignusa here, and we're going to get through it just fine. Now, usually at the end of my top 10 games of whatever year, I usually got a little bit of a lull, and that's kind of trying to figure out, hmm, what's the next video going to be? And for this year, I had a few things to pick. Could have been, you know, like Persona 3 Reload, which I really enjoyed, but I didn't record any, and I'm not going to play through it all over again just to record some footage. Could have been Jacuzza 8, aka Infinite Wealth, which, you know, I could record some footage for, but I'm just, I'm not really quite sure where I'm at with that game. And then luckily, here comes a game that just lands on my lap. The Star Wars Battlefront Collection. Remaster Collection, whatever the hell, by Aspire Entertainment, coming along to hopefully rekindle all of our childhoods and all those great memories of Star Wars Battlefront. Now you might be wondering to yourself, does the game rekindle those memories? Is it a nice, wonderful remaster? The answer is no! Hell no! This thing's a piece of trash! So, let's talk about it. So, for the fellas out there, I gotta set the stage for Battlefront 1 and 2, the classic Battlefront 1 and 2, which were developed by the Long Dead Pandemic Studios that created many incredible experiences, ranging from Star Wars Battlefront to Destroy All Humans, which I love, and Mercenaries, and I grew up with all of them and I love each and every single one of them. And I remember countless hours of fun that I had with my brother or with some other friends playing split-screen co-op, whether it be in the campaign, side-by-side, side, or an endless tirade of screen-peaking accusations when we were fighting head-to-head. -head. So I have to say, fellas, that without exaggeration, some of the best video game memories that I had grown up with are in these two games. The only ones that I compare it to are playing Halo 3 after school with the boys, or spending countless hours getting my ass handed to me by my brother in Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2. Shout out to my brother, the DJ Witness Me, that I'm gonna show his stuff down below for all those wonderful memories, as well as Budokai 2. Man, we gotta play that again sometime. But anyway, all that Aspire had to do was get these games, port it to the modern systems, and hopefully run in a decent state where everybody can enjoy them and see them for what they were and, and you know, bring back that childhood. It's a relatively simple thing. Many other studios have done it and succeeded, especially like Night Dive's uh, recent remaster of Star Wars Dark Forces, but Aspire couldn't even do that. When bringing these old games to the modern age, what most people are looking for are quality of life features that bring us the classic experience, but to modern sensibilities that we have come to expect. Take for instance the various different modes that are found throughout the two games, whether it be the campaign, galactic conquest, or even just hopping into instant action matches to get whatever you want out of the way. You would hope that you could load up into a lobby with all of your good friends and then choose which sort of mode that you want to play. Perhaps you want to run a mission or two through Battlefront 2's 501st campaign, then follow that up with blasting ships on Battlefront 1's Bespin platforms, then enjoying some good old hero assault on Mos Eisley. Well, I'm sad to say that you get none of that, because the launcher splits the game into two, well, you know, games that you have to launch, then you go into the multiplayer and run a LAN game, or find your buddy's name by manually searching for the session and then joining it, which is, oh boy, what a pain in the ass to do. And that's if you can even join a match to begin with. That brings us, of course, to the absolute terrible state of the netcode that Aspire has done for Battlefront, and the fact that most of the time I couldn't even get into a match, and when I did, it would last, I don't know, maybe like five minutes. And when it is time to load into the next match, well, it would just crash, or it would just never load into the next session. You know, whatever you want. I don't know if Aspire didn't expect as many people to be on the game, but we recently just saw with Helldivers 2 that they had huge issues with servers and getting new ones up and running, so what made Aspire think that the beloved series of games from the beloved Star Wars IP wasn't gonna need, you know, maybe more than a couple of servers? So if you were hoping to hop into this damn game and, you know, get some memories going with some buds, playing around with all the different modes, then don't even think about it. Just Cut that off. Don't even think about it, because you're not going to get that. But you know what you're going to get instead? You're going to get an endless tirade of bugs and glitches, which might as well talk about that now. 
To start off like in the original Battlefront games, you have to create a profile of sorts to play the game. Back during the days of the PS2, it would be stuff like Tom or G-Man. Very simple things because we were just running the game locally, not even online. This time around, since this is online, you would think that inputting in Tom the Chosen One, like normal, would work as a profile, but unfortunately, it seems that my powerful nomenclature is offensive in several overseas territories, which means, you know, screw them, I don't give a damn. At least, that's what I would like to think, because how in the hell is Tom the Chosen One offensive slang? Hell, I even tried to get Tom the Chosen Two out of his Tom Cubation tank, and even that didn't work. Neither did Tom the Chosen Three through 53, so that's a whole lot of Temu branded Tom Cubators wasted. So with all of that, I just decided to go with some something appropriate for all ages. After that, I thought I would take good old OJ Simpson out for a spin in multiplayer and get a few kills in with my Quad Drive Yards branded Bronco, but that only seems to have lasted maybe, I don't know, like 5 seconds before the game crashed the desktop. And this crashing would become a common occurrence anytime in multiplayer, because if I was so lucky to get into a match, there was maybe a 50-50 chance that the game would crash, or, you know, I would load in, play maybe 5 minutes before the match would end, and once it started loading to the next match, the game would crash with a 100% chance of crashing. Not to mention that if I got into a match, the netcode was so bad that my internet, which I will admit is not that good here in rural Italy, kind of felt like I was sending packets out of like goddamn telegrams to the host. Sometimes to the tune of E11 to the face, stop, roll, to the dodge, grenade, stop. But hey, they're gonna call my ass the Zimmerman telegram with the way the grenades just so conveniently blow up right beside me, despite all the terrible ass netcode this game has. So, as, as always as they say, if I'm winning, it's because I won through finesse and good old work. And if I'm losing, well then it's cheating and hacking. And that's not even the end of it. There's a whole other slew of stupid bugs and glitches in this sorry ass release that we gotta go through. To start with, not really a bug, but a lacking feature, and that has to do with the fact that the controls for flying TIE fighters or X-Wings are inverted by default, and you can't really change the settings, so you're just stuck with these shitty inverted controls. Now, for a lot of flight games, this isn't usually a problem since they want to simulate flying in a decent manner. So if you pull the stick back, you're going to gain altitude and vice versa. But this is an arcade action game where half the time I'm having just to aim my damn TIE bomber to blow the hell out of a rebel transport. Another weird ass controller thing which is especially felt on controllers, and especially if you have played the original games, is that you can't remap the buttons on the controller, and even though that's like, you know, kinda caveman stuff today, it shouldn't be so bad, because surely it would just be the same controls that you remember, and nope, nope, not at all. It's new arbitrary schemes that Aspire pulled out of their ass to shove down your throat. And the remaster collection has this weird relationship with bugs from the original games that you would think they would patch out or fix, but they haven't at all. And they've only actually even added more bugs that weren't even found in the originals. For example, in the PS2 version, there's a well-known bug that the AI just doesn't spawn enemy heroes on the maps that you're playing on. So if you're playing the Republic and expecting to get your ass whooped by Count Dooku at any time, then forget about it, because it ain't gonna happen. Now, this bug isn't found on the Xbox version, which is allegedly the version that Aspire used to port the game to modern system, but guess where the bug can be found? Oh, yeah, that's right, in the goddamn remastered collection. But there's so many other bugs that I could be on this damn game for ages, like the fact that somehow the game crashes in offline Galactic Conquest, or that the 21 by 9 ultra-wide settings are so messed up with the FOV that you can barely see the maps on the spawn screen or the head of an at, -AT when you're piloting it. And damn, it feels like this at, -AT is gonna die of diabetic shock because I can't even look down too hard with all the damn chins this thing has. And the rebels say to aim for the neck armor because it's weaker there. But knowing these walkers, piloted by Brendan Fraser's The Whale, I think you're gonna have to find a one pound Reese's cup instead. Speaking of dying of diabetic shock, another thing that is comically obese about the remastered collection is its install size and porco dio, god damn it. It's 60 gigabytes, and I'm not talking about how many bites it took for this fat bastard to finish his food. Holy hell, man, how in the world do you even take a goddamn PS2 game and supersize it to 60 gigabytes? 
Well, of course, take the original textures from the original game and use some nasty ass AI upscaling that I put through on Photoshop and feed it till it reaches 4K. And I'm talking about the textures, not its goddamn blood sugar level. Then when you're done feeding this poor game these 4K textures, you don't even try to compress it into something more respectable. Like hell, you couldn't even put a damn girdle onto this thing, but shit, I don't blame it. Bitch probably can't even get off the damn bed. Like, I'm not even sure how Aspire couldn't be embarrassed with this sort of work, because what people wanted was just the bare minimum for it to work on the modern day, and if you want the bare minimum, well, you might as well get the OG games so you can grab off Steam or even GOG, aka good old games. At least that way it'll only be a few gigabytes, instead of the amount of gigabytes that you'll need to finish your order at the Heart Attack Grill in Las Vegas. And look, okay, I get it, this is like a little bit of, you know, the pot calling the kettle black sort of thing, but holy hell, even this bitch's thoughts have some weight. The reason this sort of stuff makes me so upset is that when you're working on these old games and trying to port them for a modern audience, there's really two types of people that you're making these games for. The first group are people that might have been too young to originally played the OG games when it came out all those years ago, such as myself with Night Dive Studios' exquisite remaster of Star Wars Dark Forces, but because of their remasters are fantastic, it can be enjoyed by those new and old for time immemorial. Now the second and more important group are those that enjoyed the original games all those years ago and want to go back and re-experience that part of their youth, like with myself and most of the people that I know that are interested in these remasters. I want to go back to a time where it was me and my brother who would play Hero Assault on Tatooine and I would play as Boba Fett and try to convince my brother to come up to the platform on the crash spaceship that totally doesn't have like 10 death packs on it and then when he lands on it I'll send his little Yoda to Kingdom Come by detonating all of them. But sadly with the Battlefront collection you're not going to get that and you're going to get a whole slew of issues that make it such a pain to play through that you might even wonder if the original games were even that great to begin with and when your remaster has you making those thoughts you messed up big time so getting to the end here you're probably going to be asking me so is the game worth it do i recommend playing it and the answer is hell no what are you stupid or something hell no i don't recommend this game you could be getting anything else instead of this game because if you're looking for a game that rekindles that childhood sorry to say fellas but you're not going to find it here Fellas, this release isn't just a disappointment in the fact that it is of a quality that not even crackheads would try to steal from the local pawn shop, but the fact that this ends a decent line of otherwise great ports from Aspire Entertainment. See, Aspire has been known for making some actually decent ports of Star Wars games that I have tried myself in some capacity, whether it be the Jedi Outcast or Knights of the Old Republic remasters for the Switch that I tried when I borrowed my buddy's Switch when I played Rain Code. Shout out to Geo, by the way, for letting me borrow a Switch and then taking it back before I broke it over somebody's head. And I have also heard that the Republic Commander remaster from Aspire was also pretty damn great. And if you have any of the modern system that run those great remasters, then I would handedly recommend them. Hell, their remasters and ports were so good, and Aspire had such a respect and passion for Star Wars that long ago, they were the ones that were handed the mantle to remake Knights of the Old Republic. But sadly, with it being transferred to Saber Interactive, we all know how that poor, sordid story ended. It's upsetting because hearing interviews with the developers, it really does seem like Aspire cares for Star Wars and wanted to make a great remake, but I think a lot of the Embracer Group's money troubles made it difficult to get the help that they really needed. This is especially the case with the Battlefront collection, which overall seems to be a rush job to get some money coming in. Because like the meth head I hit over the head with a bottle last night, this company is hemorrhaging more things than just money. Now, I'm going to end this video in a more positive light because I don't typically like to make these sorts of things and just complain and bitch and moan all day, but instead I'm going to name 15 games all under $60, except for one, but I'll get to that, that you can buy for the price of one Battlefront Remaster Collection, and I assure you all of these are masterpieces to enjoy. Now I'm going to be real fellas, but at the time of writing, these were the prices that I found and they were found on Steam, GOG, Xbox, and so on. But this is kind of more of an exercise in me being petty. But without further delay, let's get through this montage of all these better games to play. I'm no Jedi. I'm just a guy with a lightsaber and a few questions.
Stick his head out, Tai Young Medical is gonna chop it off. Am I strong enough? If Malak is not stopped, the Republic will fall. The Force Shit. fights with me! In you, we saw a wound in the Force. In you, we saw the end of the Force. And now, they shall see. Just find the guys, we can off them. Hey, hey, I know what you're gonna say. I know what you're gonna say. And you're gonna say, hey, Tom, didn't you go 17 cents over budget? And that is true. And I also might have gone over 100 gigabytes with the Mass Effect collection, but technically, those are three games, so <laughs> you can go suck it. But regardless, that's 15, though technically, 18 great games for you to enjoy within these collections that I would humbly recommend over this terrible, sorry-ass release of the Star Wars Battlefront collection. And with that, fellas, that's kind of the end of the video here. If you made it this far, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this once in a, you know, every so often review or impressions of a terrible game. And I hope it made you laugh along the way because, you know what? I kind of needed a laugh. If you made it this far and you're brand new, hey, welcome to the channel. I hope you like what you saw. And I'm going to say this isn't usually typically the content that I make. Usually it's more positive in nature. But if you did enjoy this video, maybe I might humbly suggest you look at my other videos. And if you like them, maybe you should subscribe. That would be pretty cool. But... Well, fellas, this is not really the video that I thought I was going to make after my update video, but hey, you never know these days, right? So with that, you know, if you're looking for anything else, don't worry. There's going to be better games coming out this year because there's already Persona 3 Reload, which I loved from the bottom of my heart. And even, um, what's it called? Oh yeah, Jacuzzi 8, Infinite Wealth, or like a Dragon Infinite 8, you know, whatever, because they want to change it. But yeah, who cares? Anyways, there's better games coming out. There's probably way more better games coming by the end of the year. And so, you know, look forward to that on this channel because we will be there to talk about it. But with that, fellas, I got to let you go because this is Tom, the chosen one, looking for childhood bliss at the end of a crack pipe. And I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>